Hello, Thistledown Gang. Welcome back to my channel, uh, if you've already been here last year. Um, if not, hi! Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my channel in 2020, which is exciting because, you know, it's a new year. I love New Year's. Um, I know that a lot of people are kind of jaded when it comes to New Year's resolutions, uh, but I'm not one of them. Um, quite the contrary. Uh, I'm Hedge, this is my channel, and um, these and, and, and you're absolutely welcome to my Friday fixes. So I, I've, I've been wanting to um, make sit down and talk videos again for quite a while now. But I decided that for a simple sit down and talk I'm not quite famous enough. Uh, people are not quite interested enough in that. Um, so I thought I might just as well combine the sit down and talk thing with crafting. Not everything that I do warrants its own video, but is still a thing that um, might inspire someone else. So yeah, here we are. This is a Friday fix. Uh, I will not necessarily um, record these on Fridays. I tried, but um, I failed and the rambling was so incoherent that even I thought, wow, I don't want to edit that. But I am going to try and upload this on a Friday each, because hopefully I'm doing this more often now. Um, the thing is, I do like more complicated videos, but I don't always have the spoons for them, I don't always have the time for them, and that sometimes stands in the way of more complicated videos. So, uh, actually, what are we doing today? I should kind of explain that before I dive into the whole talky part. Uh, we are fixing something from my wardrobe, more about the wardrobe situation in just a minute. Um, and we're talking about this thing here. I think Antonia Cecilia wore it in her last video. It is a high neck blouse, slightly Victorian-ish, quite washed out black. Um, which I don't necessarily don't but, like. But um, this thing is incredibly boring. It has a few pin tucks, which is nice, but aside from that it is quite bland and um, that is something that will not uh, will not endure in my closet, at least not in this year, because this year is the year of me uh, being done with shit. So the thing that I'm going to do is um, I am going to place a tiny little flannel heart on the chest of this thing and for that I must try it on. Inspired by um, a certain kind of fencing gear uh, from the turn of the century uh, originally, as far as I know, inspired by a picture called Girl Painting. So, uh, Les Crimeuses is a painting by Jean Béraud, and um, I, I can't really find an exact year. After, after that, painting was made famous, um, a lot of female uh, of, of female fences or models posing as fences wore this exact type of garment she was wearing and it actually influenced the, um, the fencing uh, fashion. So, so it gets actually hard to, um, to find out what uh, actual female fencing gear looked like, uh, which is fascinating from a artistry kind of Point of view. Um, so what I plan on doing is to um, put the heart here on this blouse to uh, pay homage basically um, to this picture and to this um, iconographic type which it is. Um, I will put pictures all around here uh, of that because I really like it and I also have a history in fencing, not normal fencing though, not normal sports fencing, but um, cane fencing, Kandekumba, and uh, 
So yeah, that is not just a tiny little hint um, towards the turn of the century, which I love, and uh, towards an interesting iconographic thing and fashion history, but also to my own personal history. And um, I will now proceed to put this, wait, let me reference that. But I'm not only going to work on, on tiny UFOs. If you don't know the term UFO in terms of crafting, it means unfinished object. Uh, I'm also going to work on some mending. Evelyn Wood from the, uh, from the channel of the same name has Monday mending, mending Mondays, one of the, one of the two. Um, I will, by the way, link her down in the description, give her Give her some of your time because I really like her channel um, and I have Friday fixings. I don't want this to be a, a real tutorial or anything, um, mostly with these things I'm just figuring them out as I go. Uh, you might have seen that I um, cut the heart or the, um, the allowance, the seam allowance of the heart and uh, this is so that I can bend it better. I, uh, the reason why I'm hand sewing so much is that my sewing machine is broken at the moment. Um, well, not at the moment, it is broken, period. Uh, and it is not irreparably so, but um, irreparably for someone with my budget. I inherited it from my grandmother's sister-in-law and the very model that I used has been out of production for 60 years so now I'll, I'll have to do a lot of hand sewing this month and the next and this is why I'm kind of over over hand sewing for now um, because today I've, I've done some four hours of hand sewing or something because I don't have a machine um, so that's that's what's been happening here uh, which is kind of annoying because because I have a lot of UFOs and um, I kind of have have this deal with myself that uh, in order to gain some sort of control over my many full projects my projects are right across me and it's quite the pile and there's even more in the chest of drawers that it sits on um, so to uh, to gain control over that I have a list of newly started UFOs and I must complete one more than I started for a reason that I will disclose in a second I might have started 19 projects this month alone and uh, let it be known that today is the 8th of January. I'm currently pondering uh, which, which thread to use for this, uh, for this heart, which now looks like this. Uh, quite stitch punky, I like it. So why do I have oodles of projects sitting right across me at this time of year? Um, well, my year started out uh, incredibly productively. It started two days before New Year's Eve um, when I suddenly decided I wanted to uh, to clean up my desk because I couldn't work like that and um, I, uh, I, you know, I, I need space on my desk because I'm an illustrator <laughs> aside from my normal job and um, having having some Space on your desk is kind of essential for that and uh, being able to work with something bigger than A4 is kind of nice. So um, I was annoyed by that, that I couldn't do that, so I decided to just, you know, clean my desk as you do. I mean, maybe you do, but I don't. 
I usually don't. Um, and when I was done with that, I suddenly felt the urge to clean up more. I don't know if that is the magic of being 30 or something, but uh, suddenly I had the urge of cleaning things and keeping things orderly somehow. I am an extremely chaotic person, which uh, drives my partner insane because he isn't. So on the first day of 2020, I very um, motivatedly decided to uh, clean out my closet. Um, so cleaning out my closet is a thought that very much appeals to me um, about half a year something. And usually I start and then I rip everything out of my closet and then it lies around and it probably gathers dust. I agonize about it a bit and in the end I will have maybe thrown out two things and then everything goes back in. So that is how it usually goes. This time it didn't. This time I actually ripped out everything from my closet, threw it on, on my floor, went through everything and had everything that I definitely wanted to keep back in the closet the same day. I mean, what the fuck? I have no idea how that happened. I sorted out about 30 pieces of clothing, half of my, half of my closet is empty still and um, my maybe pile uh, was also reduced quite a lot after going through it again that was actually something that took two days then but um, a lot of, of my stuff has found a new home already with a few friends of mine which is great because some of the things I just didn't want to simply donate but um, actually felt attached to enough that I wanted to rather hand it down to someone I knew would love it. Um, so I did that and my maybe pile did not only contain things that I maybe wanted to keep, no, it was rather a pile of things that um, I saw enough potential in to uh, be another favorite thing that would end up in my closet, but that needed tweaking. And um, the maybe was less of a maybe and more of a is it worth the hassle that I have to go through? Is it worth um, the uh, the one one uh, one dash more um, one line more in the counting of my started UFOs for the month? Um, so that was my maybe, and. Uh, about 90% of the thing ended up on the UFO pile and that is what I'm working on right now. Um, but the uh, really amazing thing about that is that I'm already done with I think 12 of them and uh, this little tale actually brings me to my New Year's resolutions um, which, which I am very fond of. I love resolutions. I actually don't only make resolutions on New Year's, I tend to make <laughs> resolutions each month. I just love new beginnings. New beginnings are fantastic. Uh, there's this one quote from Anne of Green Gables, um, tomorrow is always fresh with no mistakes in it. And um, I take that very seriously, actually. Uh, um, but New Year's is, is fantastic because when you think about it, uh, it's, it's quite a magical girl anime thing. Because there are so many people all around the world making wishes at the same moment. I mean, sure, uh, midnight of New Year's Eve, so basically New Year's, uh, is an hour apart in each time zone. But um, imagine a, a huge firework, a whole line of firework embracing the whole planet like going going around the planet in one big wave along with wishes isn't that beautiful isn't that fantastic doesn't that sound like 
a lot of magic, basically. I think this is this is such a powerful thing. This idea that so many people at the same time make wishes for, for the new year or make vows to improve their lives. And even though a lot of people discard these these wishes and resolutions even on the next day or in the next week or you know February because February is bad. Um Kathy Hay, uh another YouTuber that I really dearly love, um, has made a fantastic video about the power of New Year's resolutions and how how they should work and how actually January is a really, really horrible time for making resolutions. Um, and I will link that down in the description. If you don't know her yet, you should know her because Kathy is a fantastic motivational speaker and I absolutely love her. Um, and and she's, she's so wise and magical. Uh, that uh, in, Enough of the fangirling. Uh, so my new resolutions are to actually get more shit done, um, which, I'm, which I'm actually kind of good at. Uh, also, do more yoga. That and also having this kind of ideal closet or actually actively working towards the ideal closet um, because I want my closet to reflect who I am and um, I want this 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 perfect 80s lumberjack punk meets suffragette Edwardian witch vibe in my closet because, I mean, that's not too much to ask, isn't it? Um, and uh, I think I'm, I'm actually on a quite, quite the okay way to this. Um, and I have, yeah, I have this, this pile of projects for that. Um, and aside from that, I actually want to do more. I actually want to, to sew more for myself again and um, not just fix things all the time. I want to make things from scratch perfect things, because why settle for less? Uh, and I'm also quitting fast fashion. I mean, the thing is, when I sorted through that, uh, through that closet of mine, I encountered a few things that I actually bought from fast fashion companies, um, mostly like H&M and C&A, uh, first hand. I also have a lot of things that are second-hand from fast fashion companies, um, which makes it not so fast fashion actually, but um, somebody apparently bought it at some point. I mean, of course they did. Um, and even though I knew that not counting socks and undies, um, I could probably count the things that I bought from fast fashion companies anew on one hand. I felt incredibly bad and I don't like feeling bad I mean who does so I decided to to you know just kick it and quit fast fashion um, and by that I mean cold turkey no t-shirts uh, no more jeans even though I really really love my jeans um, they were actually a fast fashion buy last year that I absolutely love and that I will continue to wear until they fall apart. And then I will probably take uh, take off the pattern and reconstruct them. Um, I might even actually do that before they fall apart. More on that in another video. Uh, the only thing I will not give up uh, in terms of fast fashion are undies because once you have found a model of knickers that actually fit you and that make you not feel uncomfortable they are worth your own weight in gold believe me at least that's what it's like for me and um, I might actually I, I'll have to see where it goes with bras because I have um, slight problems actually finding finding bras that I like but I'm still hoping that at some point I will make some sort of historical undergarment and it will be so perfect and so fantastically back supporting that I don't have need for uh, for a modern bra anymore. Um, again, <laughs> the stays 
the, the, the stays video for Fetch is coming at some point, mainly because of this reason. I want something that is comfortable and that I can wear, you know, underneath my stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm quitting fast fashion, maybe except on these. That is, that is uh, one of my wardrobe centered resolutions. Uh, do you have wardrobe centered re resolutions? Because, um, I mean, that is, I find that incredibly interesting because I think the, the concept of designing oneself as a character, basically. So um, now that I have stitched around this heart once, I shall now um, proceed to go around it. Yeah, um, that's it for my Friday fixings today. Let me know in the comments what you are fixing right now, uh, or making, or what your New Year's resolutions are, if you have any. Be nice to yourself, be nice to others, and I'll see you all next time. And I hope you kind of enjoyed my rambling. Bye!